All right, we've seen a couple examples of using collaborative filtering. Let's see what happens if we add a little bit of extra content and do some content-based filtering. All right, that's only possible with our wide and deep recommender. So I've brought in some uh, restaurant information, both uh, with uh, features of the restaurant and features of the user and the ratings. So if we look at this, we've got the ratings. It's our uh, standard triple with the user ID, place ID, and rating, okay? I've gone and done the remove dupes based on user ID and place ID just in case. And then we've got our regular split uh, going into the train score and evaluate the recommender. So here we've got additional information on users, all right? So here we can start adding user information to our train recommender. And then again, later on to our score recommender. So let's see how we can do that. So first we're gonna go up here, we'll go to restaurant customer data. And here we've got information about each customer that's in our database, 138 different customers. Uh, we've got their user ID, latitude, longitude, uh, whether they're a smoker, how much they like to drink, uh, do they go like uh, dressing up when they go out, what kind of ambiance do they prefer, uh, how would they, how do they get around? Uh, so some restaurants are, you know, close to apartments and condos, maybe in a city that most people would walk to, or take public transportation, maybe married, single, bunch of other stuff. So. We'll filter some of this out. Let's go ahead and do that. So we'll do a select columns in data set. All right, so we'll keep user ID. We'll need that now. Let's see. I guess latitude and longitude might be useful if we know where the uh, user is. Are they a smoker? How much do they like to drink? Dress preference, ambiance. We'll bring in pretty much everything related to how they like to get around. Um, birth year. Interest. Personality. Now, this one's a little controversial. Um, religion. Now, in this case, some restaurants may specialize in serving kosher or halal food. So that might be an important or vegetarian food. So that might be an important consideration. Activities they like to do. We'll skip color. Uh, weight, I uh, already put that in. Budgets, probably a good one. How much do they like to spend out? Don't know that height is going to have anything to do, but eh, who knows? All right, so we can do that, and then we'll do the same thing for our feature data. So we need the place ID. Now here we have a choice of latitude, longitude, or city state. Uh, those kind of duplicate each other. I'm wondering if it might be useful uh, since we have latitude and longitude from the customers to go ahead and include that. Uh, we don't need the name or the address of the uh, restaurant, city, state, country, zip. Uh, there's a little bit, uh, since we've got latitude, longitude, we could probably skip those, although they get uh, evaluated uh, independently. So zip might be useful. 
Do they serve alcohol? Is there a smoking area? Dress code is is it accessible? What's their pricing? Uh, we don't need the URL and uh, ambiance. Is it a franchise or not? Area and other services. So let's uh, take a look at those and see what's in those. No, oh, the GM meter, we could keep, we can uh, eliminate that. So area, okay, so what kind of an area does it have for dining? Other services, does it have internet variety? So maybe there's, uh, they have uh, performances that they, music that they, live music or something like that. All right, so we'll take the GM meter back out. And then we can add those last to uh, the area of dining and other services. All right, so we could save those. All right, so we've got our train wide and deep. Now we can add our user features. So that's the customer data. And we can add the restaurant feature, okay? And we'll do the same thing. We'll add that same information to our scoring pill. All right, so that's all we need to do to uh, now turn this into a content-based filtering. So we're grabbing some additional user information, some additional item information, and we'll go back to our item recommendations, basically which restaurants, leave everything at the, um, defaults except for maybe the predicted rating and we'll turn this loose and uh, see what we get so we'll pause the video and come back when we're done Okay, we're back, so we can see our score. We'll preview the data, and the data looks pretty similar to what we've seen before. So we've got the user, uh, which restaurant is recommended their predicted rating for that restaurant. And then we can evaluate the recommender, and we'll get the metric for that. And we've got an NDCG of 0.94573. So basically the evaluation and the, the recommendations come out the same. Uh, so the thing we could do uh, is compare that without to see if the additional feature information, uh, i.e. the content and the content-based filtering actually helped our model so if we submit again we'll go back and take a look at the results for that and compare with that ndcg we got the first time and we come back look at our evaluate and it was 9.94628 so if we compare that with what we got last time Point nine four five seven three. So the user and item data, in this case, the content uh, information didn't really help us. So again, trying uh, different combinations and seeing what works best for your model. Maybe for restaurant ratings, it doesn't work so well. Possibly for Amazon item ratings or something like that, it may work great. So that's it for content-based filtering. Let's get back to the reading and see where we go next.